Hello and welcome to the 47th video in this series programming HS Engine in JavaScript. Believe it or not, I think I've spent nearly three hours trying to get this video done now due to software crashes and various things, so fingers crossed this one actually works, but I apologise if I end up rushing some parts, but I've got thoroughly tired of of going through the same thing over and over again and it's got a little bit frustrating anyway. So the last video I said at the end that I might have made some errors, I was correct. Not as many though as I thought I were, uh, would have made. Uh, in board.js I'm sure you spotted following the video that it's not a good idea to have an X instead of an asterisk here. Well it's now been changed to an asterisk so we've got three times max depth instead of three X max depth. And inside evaluate.js for the bishop pair bonuses here, I'd forgotten to prefix the pieces with pieces dot. So I forgot for white bishop and black bishop the pieces dot here didn't exist. The other thing I have changed however is I've removed the dividing by two um, from the adding on of the score for the sorry here for the rook table values for the queen because uh, one bad habit from C I guess is knowing that if you divide an integer by two you don't have flow, uh, decimal point precision and I don't want decimal point precision because we want to have pre precision for our score to be to uh, hundreds of a pawn it'll be represented so a score of 100 is one pawn and therefore I noticed when making the engine search that the scores were halves and things like that and realized that JavaScript was quite correctly for JavaScript converting things into a decimal or a floating point number which I didn't want. So I've taken that out as well so we no longer have the divide by two here for the p-square table values for the queen. It doesn't make much difference anyway to the performance of the engine at the moment. So what are we going to do in this video? Well, we're going to get the engine searching. So we need a tiny little bit of preparation, not very much. Inside main.js, uh, the document ready function, we're now just passing the start position and printing the board and doing nothing else. Inside GUI, we're calling search position. And when we now click on the set position, it doesn't set the position from the text. It was just for now setting the start position, which is what we'll search in this video. Inside search position, I've forced the search to go up to depth 5. And inside alpha beta, make sure you take out the call to the print move list, which was, if there was one inside your code that you downloaded, I can't remember whether there is or there isn't, there was in mine, uh, below generate moves, because you don't want 100,000 or so move lists being printed out when you search for depth 5, or maybe you do, but it irritated me after a while and certainly filled up the console in the browser. So let's get actually searching. So it's not actually very difficult. We simply need to say that our best score for the position is equal to alpha beta, and then we want to set our bounds. So that's infinite and minus infinite and infinite and we send in obviously the current depth that we want to search to and that's all we actually need to do we now have our score for the position returned from alpha beta however it'd be nice to print something to the screen to show what we've got so assuming that and i'm putting this in the wrong place assuming that we've not had to quit early from the search so after the if search controller uh, dot stop is build true then we'll take our best move from the PV table. And why am I typing a naught there? So best move equals pro PV table. And now we can actually start setting up some information to print to the console. So we'll make a var up here called line. And this is just going to be set each time to a string value just to uh, print our information to the console. So the first thing we can print is the depth that we've searched to, so we'll just call that D for now, depth, and then we'll put in the current depth. And then we'll put in the best move next, so we can just say best and a colon and and the best move. And it would also be nice to see the score, so we'll put the score in as well. And remember the score is in center pawn, so hundreds of a pawn, so 100th would be the value of a pawn. So we'll put best score in there. And let's also put the number of nodes, so the number of positions searched, 
as well. And I'll put search controller.nodes. Okay, and the last thing we need to do, which gave me minutes, believe it or not, of frustration earlier, was actually print it to the console, otherwise we don't see anything. And believe it or not, we're actually already in the state there where we can search and look at the result for the position. I'm just going to fix one tiny thing inside alpha beta though before we do this. And this is for now, whoops, that's there from the end of the video. I'm just going to increment the nodes here because we are actually evaluating this node at the moment here. We will be shortly, as you saw, I just deleted some code, looking at that we'll be needing in the next video to introduce a function we actually need to call here when we've got to depth zero, rather than returning the brutal evaluation of the position. I'll talk about that at the end of the video, but for now, we'll put the node increment here because this is a node that we've actually searched and we're returning the evaluation. So that's all we need to implement a working search. Now off screen, I'm just going to quickly refresh the browser and hope that everything searches okay. And it does, good. Okay, so refresh, I'll just bring the browser now into the screen. And this is now in the start position, so I'll just refresh again. So we've got the browser, I'll remove all this attacked and pieceless printing stuff that's filling up the console in a little while. And now if I click on set position, you can see that the program is searching. It's score here in hundreds of a pawn, remember, the number of nodes it's searched, so 230,000 to get to depth five, and the best move it's found. So it all looks okay there, but the re well, some weird things will go on, and I, the two of the, well, one of them is something called the horizon effect, which I'll come into in a minute, but the other one is, it's all very well having the best move it's found at the root, but it would be nice, particularly at the moment, to check that the engine is actually working okay, um, to have its best line printed. So in the case, say, at depth five, that we've got the five moves that lead to this score of plus 0.85 or 85 hundredths of a pawn. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to add a function that does exactly that. We're going to go into PV table, and at the top of PV table, add in a function to fill up the PV array that was defined as part of our game board structure. And this is going to be a copy and paste job here just to keep the video uh, as short as possible, otherwise it'd go on for a long time. But I'm going to call the function get PV line. And it's quite simple in terms of its concept. All we're going to do is get the move at the root from the PV table, make that move, and get the next move from the PV table and keep going until we can't get until we've either reached our depth or there are no or the move that we get from the PV table is uh, doesn't exist in the current position so not a, a legal move so what I'm going to do is is I'm simply going to paste in the while loop and talk through it so we'll say whilst the move that we have is not no move so pro PV table actually returns something and the count of the number of moves we found is less than depth, then we'll say if the move exists, and this is a function that we're going to implement shortly, then make that move on the board, add that move to the PV array for the of the game board, increment count, and then get the next move from the table. If the move didn't exist, then break out of the loop. And then at the bottom of this, we'll just return the count, so the number of moves that we found. Now, there's one little gotcha inside here that we must make sure that we do. And remember, we need to maintain the board state all the time because of playing in the GUI against the engine. And at the moment here, we'll have just made a set of moves. Well, we need to actually take those moves back. So we'll say that whilst a pi is greater than zero, then take back a move. So we return the board to its original state of when we called this get PV line. So now we need to introduce this, does the move exist? So we'll go into movegen.js and at the top we're going to put in this move exist function. And this move exist function is very easy. And again, I'm going to drop the whole thing in here to keep things a little bit uh, zippy. And I'm sorry if that's irritating, but it's all code that you've, um, you've seen before. So we generate all of the moves. We want to find out if the move here, move, exists. So we generate all the moves to the current position and we set the move found variable to no move. And for each move in the move list, 
We store that move in move found. We check whether the move is legal. If it isn't, we continue. If it is, we take it back and see then if it's the same as the move that we're looking for. If it is, then we know that the move that we've submitted exists on the, in the current position and we can return true. Otherwise, we'll return bull.false because we didn't find the move. And what I can actually do here for clarity back inside here is just put bull.true. So pretty simple stuff. Um, it's probably best to download and paste this in from the code rather than type it all in because it's uh, all code that you've seen before inside the move exists. So that now enables us actually to print our line as well that we've searched. So let's make a var called a new var called and let's call it PV num, which will tell us how many moves we've found, and just something for looping a var c. So what I'm going to do then below the line here then is say that our PV num is equal to, and I've got the name of the function already, get PV line at the depth. Oops. Okay. And then now what we want to do is we'll say that line, and we'll already add, add on something to say that we're getting the principal variation called PV. And now we can just do a for loop and say that for C equals naught, my goodness, for C equals naught, and C is less than PV num, plus plus C. It's not very readable, but never mind. Actually, yes, let's make that more readable. And now what we need to do is add on the move to our line. So a space and then plus print move. And now we need to get the move from our PV array. So gameboard.pv array at the index of C. And that's all we need to do there. So if I just save that, and again off screen, I'm just going to refresh and double check that it works. And it does. So I'll just bring over the browser again and let's have a look at the result that was found in the browser. So if we look down the bottom here, this was the search. And now you can see we have exactly the same search and node count as before and score. But now you can see how the engine got there. And this is where it's interesting. It said pawn to e3, pawn to e5, queen out to g4. So that's the queen going out to here. The bishop going from here to d6. And then the queen capturing the pawn on g7, which gives us our near full pawn advantage. And here we see some effect of the horizon effect in engines. And the horizon effect is if the engine finishes the search on its move, it'll probably quickly find, particularly at the start, that the best variation is to get the queen out straight away and capture something. Because if it reaches the end of its tree with the queen having captured, then as far as it's concerned, it's up that amount of material. Of course, it's irrelevant whether the queen can be recaptured on the next move or not. And that leads to some very strange lines, as we see here, uh, found by the engine, and also to some very strange play, and causes it often to blunder pieces, particularly if the search is shallow, as in this case. So the way around that is actually to introduce something called quiescence search. And that's something we're going to introduce in the next video, and that's why the search controller.nodes was below here. Because rather than returning the evaluation, we're going to return from here something called the quiescent search value. And that's essentially an alpha beta search without a depth limit that only searches the captures in the position. So basically resolves all captures and, and tries to find, hence the name, a quiet position to return a stable evaluation to eliminate the horizon effect. So we'll look at that then in the next video. So I hope this video uh, made some sense. It's good at last to see that the engine's searching. And over the next couple of videos after quiescent search, we can then start looking at the move ordering. And once that's done, we're finally in a position to start building the GUI and play with the browser against the program. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.